Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About uh, this Monday evening. This is uh, recorded, but I uh, hope you can join us and feel free to type in some comments and tell us what you think as we're watching this. We're going to be talking about Ramadan and Eid. Uh, now, for some of you watching, this might surprise you. We are a Christian charity, but we want to hear uh, about other faiths and other big questions and worldviews and cultures. And uh, we want to learn and hear from you because we do support uh, students from any culture and background who come to Guildford. And uh, we think this is going to be an interesting conversation. And we have a friend of ours from our Holy Book Club sessions, who's also a staff member at the university, uh, Muhammad, who I'm going to introduce. Uh, Muhammad, welcome. It's good to have you on. Hi. Yeah, it's very good to see you too, uh, uh, Phil. And thank you very much for inviting me for this. No worries. Yeah, yeah um, no, we have, we have nice. such a good time chatting at the Holy Book Club that it'd be great just to, we thought it'd be great just to hear about Ramadan and the, the various things that uh, you do around Ramadan, uh, partly because I'm, I am slightly ignorant <laughs> of the festival, other than I know it's about fasting and a, a big community thing. Uh, so it'd just be really good to, to hear about that. But before, before that, who, who are you, Mohammed? And uh, what's your background and um, what do you do at the university? Yeah, my name is Mohammed Ragab and uh, I'm a staff member, as you mentioned, at the University of Surrey. And I have been working at the university for the last uh, six years now. Uh, currently, I'm student mobility coordinator, so I look after the outgoing students, the students who go on exchange to another university. In uh, We have like 100 partner universities in Europe, in Australia, in New Zealand, in America, in Canada. Uh, so students go to these uh, universities in normal times, after lockdown and uh, when traveling is allowed. Some students are allowed to do it uh, online and some are not. That's that's what, I, what, what I'm, I'm, I'm doing at the, at the moment at the university. And uh, in terms of background, I'm Egyptian and I moved to the, to, to the UK about six years ago as well. So I joined the university three months or four months after I came here. Uh, and I'm Muslim and uh, yeah, and uh, I, I'm, I'm very privileged, actually, that I met you guys uh, in the Holy Book uh, Club. It was a coincidence that uh, the invitation came across very, very brief, or very briefly, and I accepted the invitation just to come and see what's happening. And since the, since that, uh, the beginning, uh, I don't think I have missed a lot of the meetings, maybe mm -hmm. once or twice, and uh, I like it. Yep. It's yep. a very big learning uh, journey to know about yep. the different faiths. Absolutely. No, it's been so good to to hear and uh, hearing you recite as well, because you recite the Quran, uh, and uh, it's been a new experience for for me. And also hearing from Rabbi Alex as well, and and sharing the Jewish uh, faith, and and having sometimes uh, I wouldn't say heated, but quite it can be quite intense discussion because we disagree uh, on various things, and um, that's okay. <laughs> we can still be friends and discuss this, and I, I really appreciate that. And, uh, and and so today is just really a, a conversation and to find out about what you believe uh, and what you do around Ramadan, uh, which is coming up soon. So when, when does Ramadan actually start? Yeah, Monday is supposed to be the 29th of this current lunar month. And the lunar month can be either 29 or 30 days. So the right. beginning of Ramadan is between Tuesday and Wednesday. So we we have to follow these uh, uh, calendars. Uh, in the old days, it used to be like someone goes in the highest mountain of the village or the town, and they see the birth of the new of the new moon, and they come down, and they have to be like uh, good behaving people, good religious people, and people. Uh, believe in them but nowadays you know technology and uh, telescopes and all of mm -hmm. these things so we we, we we definitely use these uh, uh, technologies so according to the the new technologies yeah it should be between the tuesday and wednesday the beginning of the ramadan so you're not going to go up on the mount and and have a look for the moon <laughs> it's cold actually it's, 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 
<laughs> it's still cold. <laughs> because for, the, for those not in Guildford yet, the, the yeah. high, one of the highest points around Guildford is called the Mount, and you, you get a really nice view over Guildford uh, on both sides of the Mount. And uh, yeah, when you, when you visit Guildford, we, we do a few walks up there. Okay. Good. <laughs> um, have you been up the Mount yet? Yourself? I don't think I. I don't think I have uh, been to the Mount before. Oh so, no! Oh, we'll, yeah. we'll we'll have to meet up there, and I'll, I'll show you around. Thanks. Um, that would be lovely. Especially, <laughs> have you been in Guildford the whole time of your your six years? Yes, so, yes, yes. But uh, we we'll, we'll have to I, introduce uh, you. <laughs> yes, that would be it. Would be a new introduction to me after six years, and uh, I love I love nature around here. So it would be great to, to see the this new high high site. There you go. Yeah, well, we'll yeah. let's do that. We'll, we'll plan that. So, so we're talking about Ramadan starting, but let's go back a little bit. What what is Ramadan? Uh, what was the history behind it, and and why is it so important? Yeah, it's it's important in terms of history. According to Quran, we the Quran mentions that fasting as a fasting has been has been uh, ordered by God, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to all the nations before us. It's not something new. I think you guys, uh, in Christianity, you have fasting. Mm -hmm. The Jews fast. And we believe that fasting is a command from God uh, to all nations. So Muslims having this one also from, from uh, God as how all the nations before us have been uh, ordered to fast. And in terms of how does it how does it does it work? Uh, we we fast for thirty days, or according to the lunar the, the lunar calendar again, it can be twenty nine days or thirty days. And we, we don't have specific uh, celebration for Ramadan where when it, when it comes or it starts. It's all about spiritual uh, celebrations. It's not uh, like you no know, parties, no celebrations, and no festivities, and all of it. It's all about because the main purpose of of ramadan and here is uh, here is a big misconception uh, not just in the west but uh, amongst a lot of muslims as well that uh, ramadan is for people to feel how the poor and how the needy people uh, feel hungry mm -hmm. or when they get hungry or but it's not like this because even the needy people and uh, the poor people they ask it to to fast Mm -hmm. if, if it's about uh, how they how they feel theoretically they shouldn't fast then right. but every single muslim who can fast they they it's a compulsion it's a compulsory thing it's, it's not an option except if someone can't do it if someone is uh, sick someone is old someone is pregnant uh, someone takes uh, medication and they must take this medication otherwise they're gonna die Hmm. So these are the, the, the very few uh, exceptions that uh, otherwise anyone, every single person, man, woman, child, uh, adult, they can do the from the dawn time to the sunset time fasting. They must do it. And right. uh, 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 that's 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 all. so the, to clear the misconception, mm -hmm. the yeah. real the real meaning of fasting is to gain piety okay. so by fasting you you're training your soul your body your spirit and uh, all you all who you are to this that you can stop you must stop from doing a lot of things and where outside of ramadan you can do them like eating you have to stop from that from the dawn time to the sunset time Outside of Ramadan, you can eat anything and everything except of the things that are forbidden. The same thing for uh, drinking and uh, having uh, having uh, uh, love uh, with the with with partners or wives. All of these things are allowed uh, normally, but during the day of Ramadan, you can't. In the night, all of these things are allowed as well. So nothing uh, food you can eat, of course, from the sunset time to the dawn time uh, in the night drinking having love all of that mm, there is no problem so that's the but the piety thing is the main purpose of fasting so they the, uh, i think there are a lot of scholars saying that <clears throat> the more you feel hunger 
the more your soul is cleansed. Your soul doesn't feel the piety when you're full of food because it's all about the heart and the stomach and the heart don't don't go together. Right. One, one of them must must feel hunger and one of them must be full. If the heart is is if the if the soul and the heart is full of piety, it doesn't matter how much food you have in your stomach. But if the stomach is full, always full, and you don't feel hungry, the piety is questioned and hmm. the heart health is questioned. The spiritual life is questioned. And that's 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 why fasting is there to, to cleanse the whole body and purify the whole body. That's really interesting. I mean, we, we do have a concept of fasting, uh, as you said, as Christians um, and, and the based on Jewish tradition as well, that there is something, and I think most religions have a form of fasting. There is something about um, restricting, uh, well, actually Christians recently have just had a period of Lent. Uh, some Christians will practice Lent, which is 40 days of, of a fast of some sort. And that might've been, it wouldn't be food <laughs> for that length of time, uh, but they will have given something up for Lent. Uh, which is which is a similar kind of thing. In giving something up, you are showing your reliance on God for His provision, uh, His uh, feeding you, <laughs> both spiritually and uh, physically. So th th there's a sort of similar concept uh, in that regard. That there's something about um, limiting your intake <laughs> to focus on who who God is, and um, it's not an easy practice there's there's something about the the challenge of it the reminder that you're hungry should point you towards um god and, and so this, it is quite interesting to there's a shared experience across across many faiths so you have the whole the whole day so dawn to which in may isn't too bad but if it's in august <laughs> it yes, gets a bit, yeah. a bit yeah. harder and you've only yeah. got a short night time to catch up on on some food um so just just to sort of explain that what why does it, it is that because of the lunar calendar as well as to why it changes through the year yes yeah. it's between those months of may and august is it yeah every every month every year you have 11 days less because of because because of the ca the calendar has changed and then different the different uh, length of the month so it, it rotates all over the year this year or well, next year is going to be 11 days earlier. Yeah. The following year it's going to be 11 days earlier and all of that. Of course, so it, yeah. can, it, it's, it goes all around the whole year. There is no specificity if it's going to be in May to August. It can be in in, in, in January, in April, in February. So it goes across the whole year. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's, that's why, Ramadan, is it specific to anything that Muhammad did? What is it specifically about? Ramadan um, in connection to why why is it that month um, does the name mean anything it, it, it the name doesn't mean anything because it, it the the month was named before before Prophet Muhammad so the, the month right, okay. the names of the months uh, right so the so Ramadan is the name of the month is that yes oh okay I didn't realize yeah that. The, in, in Arabic the, the lunar calendar is 12 months as well right <clears throat> and that ninth month month is ramadan so okay. that month was existing with the name even before prophet muhammad has been right. uh, uh sent as a, as a prophet but uh, uh, allah uh, uh, dedicated or decided that this is going to be the month of awesome. fasting cool, yeah and that that was that. There is right. there is no there's no we, we can't ask God why why did yeah, you ask, yeah, yeah, why do yeah. why do you want this specific month to be the, the fasting month? So okay. we we have been I think it was uh, it started a few years after the beginning of Prophet Muhammad's message. It it hasn't started from the beginning there because the 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 religion in the beginning was going step by step order but mm. not all of these like the fasting and prayer and uh, and the pilgrimage and uh, uh, all of these boundaries they haven't been enforced to muslims in one shot 
they came very, very gradually according to the circumstances and how people can do that and when and where. Uh, is it going to be in Mecca, going to be in Medina? So mm. fasting, I think it has been a few years after the beginning of the message of uh, Prophet Muhammad. And then once the surah, the, the Quran said, said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking all of you Muslims to fast this month of Ramadan uh, every year and every single person except if someone can't, mm -hmm. that's done. There is no question. There you go. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. No, that makes, that makes sense. So, okay, so you've got this this whole month. I've heard that in connection with Ramadan, you've got this uh, festival of Eid. Um, what, what what is Eid, and how is that connected to to Ramadan? Yeah, uh, Eid. Muslims in general, we only have two feasts. We don't have many many festival days. Only only two days. The first one is the first day of the new month after Ramadan and this is we call it the Eid al-Fitr or al-Fitr Eid and al-Fitr means break in the fast okay. so that's that's it. people celebrate or oh, Allah Allah has uh, has uh, uh, gave us or gave Muslims this day to celebrate uh, the conclusion or the concluding or finishing the fasting of the whole month so that the people can can celebrate and uh, enjoy a day of like food and uh, meeting each other gatherings and uh, whatever is, is is available and uh, permissible uh, on that day and the second day is the sacrifice day which is about two months and uh, ten days after this this day and uh, it is the culmination of the pilgrimage, the journey to Mecca. So that, and also we celebrate the, the day that uh, Prophet Ibrahim, Ibrahim uh, was asked to slaughter his son, uh, mm -hmm. Ishmael. Yep. And, God, and uh, God saved him with a ram. Mm -hmm. So Abraham is the father of, of all prophets. And uh, Ishmael is the father of Prophet Muhammad because Prophet Muhammad comes from this, uh, from this chain, from this side. Because you know he, it was it was uh, Ibra Ishmael and Isaac, mm. and Isaac is the father of the Jews, and Ishmael is the father of the Arabs. Right. Okay. So uh, uh, that's why we celebrate that day that the, the father of all the Arabs and all and Prophet Muhammad has been saved and rescued at the time it's, it's an argument i think between mm -hmm. jews and and muslims who was the one that was uh, meant to be sacrificed the, yeah the, the jews. it'd be isaac for yeah the, i think the jews yeah. believe it was isaac mm -hmm. muslims believe that it was uh, ishmael. ishmael interesting uh, I, I not realized there was a difference in that story there so that, that's an interesting maybe that's another conversation for us yes. at the club. that's it that's a good one <laughs> yes it's a, it's a, it's an interesting differentiation between the two days so that right. day that second day the sacrifice day is also a day of celebration right. and those who can who can sacrifice a, a ram can sacrifice a goat uh, sacrifice a cow buffalo camel they can do this but if someone can't afford buying this uh, this uh, sacrifice there is no problem at all it's not, right. it's not a problem yeah. just if they, so we, if they these can. are the only two days we uh, norm we should we don't celebrate the day of prophet muhammad's birth right the day of or any any other days but some some new some people some muslims celebrate these days right but it's not allowed we only follow prophet muhammad's celebrations and how did he celebrate and what did he ask us to celebrate and he didn't ask us to celebrate his day, his birthday. Right. He, he himself, he said that I celebrate my birthday by fasting. So right. every single week he used to fast Monday because he was born in a mon on a Monday. So every every week he used to, to fast Monday hmm. and Thursday. So Monday, wow. and and we we also some a lot of people take this as um, as an example. So Monday, the birth of Prophet Muhammad, every week is celebrated by fasting, right. wow. and Thursday is the day that uh, all our wor our works and actions and the good good deeds and bad deeds are ri uh, arisen by the angels to Allah subhanahu wa to God so prophet muhammad said that i love my works to be risen to God and the while i'm, I'm fasting so that's right. why he used to fast thursday and and monday 
That's really interesting. I, I didn't realize that. Is that something you practice or is that something that just some some Muslims do? Yeah, it's it's not compulsory. Right. <clears throat> this is not a compulsory thing. It's like an, an additional uh, practice. Right. I from time to time I do the Monday and Thursday. Right. But not I should do it as as regularly as as possible mm -hmm. because it's it's a lot of reward. Mm. But uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not I'm not very good with uh, with it. it's a lot of a lot of uh, fasting. There's a lot of fasting. It, yeah, and and then it, it needs a bit. lot of dedication. Yeah, a lot of dedication. So hopefully one day soon I can I can I can do it every week. Wow. Yeah. No, that would be, be interesting. Yeah. So okay. So you got Eid, and then so during. Uh, Ramadan itself, when it gets to the evening, is that quite a uh, social event? Um, it, like, what, how, do you break the fast in the evenings during Ramadan with family, or is it just uh, you eat and you wait for Eid to be the the real celebration? Or you know, life is very normal in Ramadan. There is no right. kind of the word celebration is is actually. Uh, not a normal word in terms right. when we relate to, no, 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 not not because you're using it uh, but I mean even for us it, it's not celebration it's uh, it's actually it makes the the, the, the the sunset time makes us anxious more than celebrating the fa the breaking the fast because we don't know how did we do the day did we fast well did we follow all the guidelines? Did we uh, uh, control our our eyes? Did we control our tongue? Did we control our stomach? Did we control our nose? Did we control our thoughts? Because even the thoughts, you, you have you have to be uh, aware how 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 you're thinking about things. What mm. what are your eyes looking at? What are you saying? Even e every single word counts. Not just in Ramadan, but outside of Ramadan. But in Ramadan is is more. We need to be more cautious. Mm. Be right. very careful. So no bad, no backbiting, no slow, no, 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 no bad words at all. Uh, no lying, no raising voices. It ha you must tolerate and uh, be as moderate as possible. So right. by the end of the day, normally we should be anxious to see how we did. It's like the result of the day. Did, right. you win? Yeah. did you did you did you pass or it hasn't passed we don't know of course we were only going to know in the judgment day mm. but that's that gives us hope that the next day and i i can remember what i have done today i spoke to uh, this man and i didn't uh, treat him well or I said something bad or i thought about something badly tomorrow i should be much better so i need right. to to behave so uh, uh, that but in terms of celebration we just when we come to the sunset time just we eat. start eating as normal drinking as normal and we do the prayer but we shouldn't eat that that much because in ramadan we do extra prayers mm -hmm. in the night so okay. if you eat too much your stomach is full you know you're just gonna go sleep yeah <laughs> that's, <laughs> right. that's not the point of it yes <laughs> So it's not uh, food celebrations. It's, yeah. it's still it keeps going spiritually even after the sunset time. The spirituality right. of fasting doesn't stop. Yeah. Well, it has to be uh, uh, there. The thought of fasting should be there even if while you're eating. Right. That's yeah. That's uh, quite interesting that it, it continues overnight even while you're eating and the. Uh, the desire to be good and the desire yeah. to to do good and and challenge yourself. I, I find it interesting you use the word anxious about that. It's not a, a, a feeling I would have um, anticipated <laughs> on that one. Um, it's, it's really interesting. I, I had a friend at university who who's a Muslim, and I was quite curious as I am now about what he believed. And uh, all the answers you're giving me now, he, he didn't. He, he didn't actually know. He just said, I, "I'm a Muslim. I just do it. <laughs> I'll find out later. I just I've got to focus on my on my course." So this has been a really interesting conversation. So I really appreciate it's uh, actually, you. Are. So, so sorry to interrupt. It, 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 we 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 always ask to seek knowledge mm. related to what we're doing. It's not just you do it because you are asked to do it. Yeah. Yes, definitely. We we ask to do everything and we sh but there are reasons in in some things and there are mm -hmm. outcomes of doing this so rather it, it makes it it makes you doing it more passionately if you know mm -hmm. why you're doing this and what are the outcomes of doing this and and that anxious the the word anxious actually 
it, it, I just thought about it right now while we're talking, because each each every single day can be a, a test, mm -hmm. and the sunset time where you're going to break the fasting is the result where the result is going to be revealed for you. So you and and you are the only one who puts your results. Right. So you you need to you can go oh, okay. Do I think I did well? Hmm. Was the day successful? How can I uh, uh, evaluate my fasting today? Do I, did, did, so you hmm. are. It's quite reflective. You, oh, yes, you are the only reflective person on yourself. Okay. And that's why you. Do, that's why it is. It's a relation between you and God. Nobody hmm. and fasting actually. That's actually takes that takes me to the to the Nick to the another very very important related to fasting. Fasting is one of these practices between you and God. Hmm. Nobody else can see you while you're fasting. Because yeah. if I'm in a room here by myself, I can eat, drink, watch whatever on, 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 on online, say whatever uh, online, but God is watching you even everywhere. So that's why that anxiety is, is needed every single day by the end of the day. So you need to be honest truthful to yourself as how you get it because this is going to lead to be how you're going to be truthful and you and 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 uh, to god so that's why oh yeah. tomorrow i shouldn't i shouldn't do this i have to remember that's really helpful no this is really interesting so just a, a couple more questions i realize we've almost talked for half an hour already which is <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so fast. lots of things Oh, the, the, the next couple of things are really more a little bit of practicality and um, over the last year, sort of reflecting on uh, how, how uh, lockdown has impacted. I mean, for, for Christians, it's impacted churches who are not able to meet or so, some are or they have they have been in the last lockdown. But in the first lockdown, they weren't. Um, Ramadan last year was right in the middle of one of the lockdowns, wasn't it? Yes, it yeah. was. So how, how did how did lockdown affect last year and how how is it? Is it going to affect Ramadan this year, or should things be opened up by this I time? Think I haven't, I haven't received uh, because we, we we received newsletters from the Islamic Society at the University of Surrey, uh, mm. a group of uh, volunteering students uh, uh, headed by uh, Dr. Husni, and uh, we haven't, I haven't heard what what's going to happen. But if the regulations will continue as how they are now, it will affect our our night prayers because after sunset we we go for a collective prayer every night and mm -hmm. that can be from about it lasts for about two hours mm -hmm. and that's like a, a a congregation every every night in wow. the in the university but if we can't meet with this one people can do can do it uh, at home mm -hmm. uh, individually so this is one of the one of the uh bad effects of lockdown in terms of Ramadan for Muslims. Mm -hmm. And the second one is the the the, the celebration, not the, the fast, the breaking break the fasting collectively as well. The university or at the university, we hold breakfast for a number of students and uh, people come from around Guildford to, to eat together because eating together is, 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 is good. It's mm -hmm. very good. You can feel the spiritual uh, collectivity of everyone, and uh, people pray for each other, celebrate with each other, uh, know how they are doing, uh, talk mm. to each other, uh, family gatherings and uh, people gatherings. So that's that the unity, some kind of unity. So they 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 do the the breakfast, we do the prayer, and there is a gap between this prayer about an hour, an hour and twenty minutes to the next one. Right. So the people, some people stay in in the university to do that long prayer. So if the lockdown is going to keep uh, like this, and we can't go and, and do the these collective uh, prayers uh, and uh, breakfast at the university, I don't think uh, hard, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be affected. Yeah. Like churches, like you can't mm -hmm. go. The same yeah. thing. We we can't go to the to the prayers uh, at the university or in, in the mosques. Yeah, I just made it really. I know. I think that's one of the toughest things because, like what you say, there's just there's something about meeting together as a community. Yes, that is quite spiritual. I, I would I'd say that I'd use that language as a Christian. That there's there's a we're called to meet together, and there's something within that community of believers that ties you to each other, and even that you experience God's presence. Uh, I, I think that's something we can we can share. 
um, or at least an ex- there's something about that meeting together that I've really missed uh, in lockdown. Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, very much looking forward to ease up, and I, I hope that it does uh, soon. And maybe hopefully part of your Ramadan, you can meet together for those prayers. Thank so you. just just a very practical one for anyone that's watching that is a Muslim uh, or interested. Um, it, is there a local mosque in Guildford? Um, and if not, where, where, how, how do you, where would you meet? You said something about university. What does that look like? Yeah, uh, mosque as a mosque, uh, as a separate building uh, that is dedicated for worship. There is no one, uh, there is no mosque in Guildford. The, there were a lot of tries and um, and the petitions and the applications to the council mm. for the last years and years, maybe 30, 40 years, and uh, wow. they all rejected for some, I don't know, political reasons, yeah. uh, environmental reasons, I, I don't know, but I, I, I would say I would take it for political reasons. Yeah, yeah. But uh, generally speaking, we don't have a, a mosque in the in Guildford area. The nearest one is in Woken, and Slough and Reading. Right. Reading is too far, like about it's an hour, 20 minutes and something, Slough the same. Mm-hmm. So Woken, is the nearest but we are very very lucky and very grateful for the provision of prayer room and uh, prayer and uh, islamic facilities at the university of surrey because we can do the friday prayers every friday when there is no lockdown mm-hmm. uh, we can we can hire a big room or book a big a big room the, like the the uh, the hall the university hall it takes about 20, 200 to 300 people in the same the instrument room so okay. very good and also we we have the prayer room uh, a small dedicated room for muslims to pray every day and it is open 24 7 when it is allowed to be at the university yep. so if anyone at the university or around the university and they want to come for the for the for the prayer they can uh, at any at any point uh, uh, in in the day or night, I think it, it's even open in the in the night normally. Yeah. Uh, the Friday prayers when it's when there is no lockdown, they can come at the university and uh, they can join actually the Surrey Islamic Society uh, mm-hmm. newsletters, so they can receive the monthly calendar, uh, all updates related to Muslims in Guildford and around. What time is the prayers taking place on Fridays, and all the announcements, so they can receive them. Uh, by email that's great no, i really appreciate that there's um also i know that dr husney from the chaplaincy team he does his friday sermons doesn't he on the students union page so if you're interested and, and not yet here in guildford do go on to university of sorry student union page and you'll find a very active chaplaincy uh which is the, is the, the well-being and faith group on campus where we support people of faith all faiths and and none uh we, we've got a good group there so uh Mohammed, just thank you so much i noticed that you've uh, got company in your room now <laughs> so yes you can't clearly... stop you can't stop the little ones <laughs> intruding into our room <laughs> we've, we've, we've clearly gone too long he's impatient to see his dad so uh well it's such a pleasure to speak to you as always and uh, speak to you I'll, too. I'll end the recording now I'll just close up on a, a few little notices so thank you for watching uh if you're interested in anything to do with the chaplaincy please do get in touch um, you can find us on uh, My Surrey if you're part of the student body. And uh, do ping us a comment. What did you think of this conversation? Uh, do you celebrate Ramadan? Are you interested in, in what Mohammed has talked about? Are you interested in talking about uh, Christianity and Muslim uh, Islam and the differences? Well, look into our Holy Book Club and how we discuss the scriptures. We disagree on various things, but this is how we talk. We're, we're friends and we can... Uh, disagree healthily and we think that's what society needs we need to be able to talk about these things openly and uh, hopefully learn from each other a little bit more uh, rather than uh, getting angry and all the other things that happen so thank you for listening thank you for watching do leave us a comment and uh, have a good rest of your evening see you later